The Sick, The Dying, and The Dead is the 16th studio album by the classic thrash and heavy metal band Megadeth. Of course, this is Dave Mustaine and a bunch of new people this time. We don't have Dave Ellison or any of the people like that. This album features three new people here and has 14 songs on here and it is about an hour and three minutes. I was very excited for this album. I will admit that I have not listened to as much Megadeth as I should, but I have of course heard Peace Sells the whole album, Rest in Peace, which is one of my all-time favorites, and Countdown to Extinction, so like the three biggest ones. I still need to go back and listen to a bunch of them and I haven't listened to like Dystopia, which was the last one before this, so I didn't exactly have the proper feeling for the newer Megadeth, so just keep that in mind. This is just me going from what I know of the band, and I know a lot about them because obviously I'm a massive thrash fan and a massive heavy metal fan, so that's why I was excited, and I think this album is very, very good. I do have some complaints, of course, but I think overall I was very satisfied with this one. I will go individually into every single track here later on in the video like I normally do, but overall for this album, let's talk about a few things. So one of my main problems I have with Megadeth is Dave's voice. It isn't like it completely, I completely hate it. I think it's bad. No, it really depends on the album or the performance. I don't mind it at all on Rest in Peace or on Countdown to Extinction, but on some of the other tracks and some of the other albums that I, and I haven't heard some of the full ones, but I do know a lot of their popular songs as well. Sometimes it does get in the way here and he's definitely age. I mean, I'm comparing this album to albums that came out 30 plus years ago and I'm fully aware of that and I have seen their live videos from the past 10 years, but still sometimes his voice voice is very good here and I actually was surprised that I liked it so much but other times he did sound a little bit bored and I don't know if that's just because he cared more about the guitar playing which makes sense because the guitar playing is out of this world fantastic and I will get into that in a bit but I will say I enjoyed it but sometimes I was like okay he, he doesn't really seem to put enough energy into some of these songs but again that's just a personal thing I think he's a phenomenal musician so that that didn't get in the way of my enjoyment of the album overall. And of course, the guitar playing on Megadeth is always the best part about all this. This one actually had less solos than I expected, at least from memory. I listened to this right as it dropped last night. I have all these notes about it, so I will get into them specifically later, as I said. But although maybe sometimes a lot of the riffs can be repetitive with just opening, chugging, and stuff like that, I don't really care because it's just fun. It's something that I will point out and Sometimes when I listen to stuff like this, I'm like, okay, that that's funny that it all kind of starts off with very similar things and similar keys and stuff like that. But some of these songs had a good way of changing it up. It wasn't just like, just like that. There were sometimes where there were quick pull-offs or um, they would like change the root note and change stuff like that. But there was probably a better musical theory way of kind of explaining why it sounds like that, and I just don't know it off the top of my head. And when the solos do come in here, I think they're great. I think the tone of the guitars, for the most part, is awesome as well. It really does have that classic Megadeth sound, and you know what you're going into for this album if you've listened to some of the other ones. Again, I've only listened to a few, but I have, I feel like I've listened to enough to be able to make that statement. And the bass was really good here. I think the mixing of this album overall was good. Sometimes it is drowned out a little bit by the electric guitars, but that's just when it, there's like a ton of gain, ton of distortion, all stuff like that. But there's even a bass feature here. I think it's really good. I'm not familiar with the three other musicians that Dave made this album with, I will say. I don't really know them or off the top of my head don't know them from their other bands, but I think they were good. And the drummer was very good as well. I felt that there was a little bit of 80s hair metal kind of infusion here because a lot of times in the chorus he was playing something that you would hear back then with uh, lots on the ride um just you know, stuff like that in um, the chorus, and it was different from what I expected, but I liked it. It actually didn't feel as repetitive because some songs had that, and I think it was like a cool little nod back there. Maybe it wasn't on purpose, and a lot of people will take that as an insult. Trust me, it's not. The 80s hair metal drummers, a lot of them are really, really good, even if you don't love the genre. I'm very hit and miss for that one, but I really enjoyed that, and there are two covers on this album, two covers that at first I was like, this one sounds like a punk song. This is really weird. I didn't expect it. And then I looked it up. It was a Dead Kennedy song. And I'll talk about this later. And then the last song features Sammy Hagar. 
everyone's favorite 80s uh, frontman, and I wasn't a big fan of the song, but uh, a lot of people will be, so that's great. But let's go into all the songs individually, because that's what people are really here for. So the opening track, The Sick, The Dying, and The Dead, starts off with an atmospheric track playing quietly in the back. After quiet, cleaner guitars open the song, we jump right into the chugging you'd expect. Two and a half minutes in, though, we get a total change up, and I think this was a great opening for the album. Life and Health thrashes its way into your soul with quick picking and fast lyrics. The overall theme of this album is clearly carried through this track as well. Dave goes down to his lower register here for a much more menacing voice, and I liked it. It worked really well during the breakdown of the song. Night Stalkers, featuring Ice-T, has a classic Megadeth sounding riff with quick chugging on the E and fast pull-offs below it on the A string, I think. The energy of this track definitely makes it stand out. Ice-T was a pleasant inclusion on this track as well because he sounds like a video game commander. The song definitely feels too long because it ends and then a bass soloed here, and I looked up and it was still going. Not not bad, just a little lengthy, but it was a very bold choice to include a rapper on it, and I think it really worked. Dogs of Chernobyl opens with a grand and mystic feeling. The acoustic guitars help out, but when the heavy part comes in, it pounds your head in. Isn't that awesome? This is definitely one of my favorite tracks just from the heaviness and the groove alone. This is how they die. Sacrifice is a good track, but the vocals lack a little bit for me. His voice is always hit and miss, so I expected this here. They just don't hook me as much as some of the other songs. Junkie has a chorus that is exactly what I expected, but I really love the riff and the guitar tone on this track. The drum fills are great, the bass is clean, and the song got me hyped. This song is the first time where I really heard a bit of that hair metal inclusion, and I think it actually fits this album really well. An ascending drum beat opens psychopathy, but once a strong guitar hit and a dancing bass comes in, it just spirals into a quick spoken monologue from Dave. Killing Time kicks off right away with the typical vocals and heavy riffing, but again, later on in the song the drum groove turns more into an 80s style one. The mixing on this album is very good as well because the bass find its spot to shine, even with the heavily distorted guitars and punching drums. Soldier On blasts off with a heavy march beat. I wonder why. Anyway, sometimes this track feels a little too full dynamically. Sometimes there's tapping on guitars, thumping bass, quick changing drum beats, and lead vocals. This is probably just me. I like the track, but sometimes there was just so much going on in it that it was hard to focus on one specific thing, if that makes sense. Sally Vuitton, I think I said that right, is on the shorter side for these tracks, but the thrash feeling helped me get right into it. The lyrics grab your attention and the speed of the song grabs you and doesn't let go. The solo here feels so powerful and kicks your ass. This is also one of my favorite tracks on this album. Mission to Mars is our first real bass feature here with it opening the song. Even though the palm muted chugging on the low E is what we come to expect, this song found a fun way to change it up a bit. Day's singing style on this album is more of a speaking tone, and when he sings, it is either quad Drupal tracked or edited a little bit, and I love the Rust in Peace mention in the song towards the end. You can't really find it in the lyrics on Apple Music, but it is in there, and what I mean by that is I know he's been doing this for quite a while, and I kind of expected it a bit, but it is more noticeable on this album. There isn't a lot of like very clear singing and stuff like that, and when it is, it is fixed up a little bit, or as I said, it's like quadruple tracked. You hear so many tracks of his voice doing it, and if that's their way of like covering something up, that's totally cool with me. That's a good way to do it. We'll Be Back was the first single, and I can see why. It captures the 90s sound of Megadeth and instantly displays the theme of this entire album. If you love the Megadeth sound, you'll most likely really enjoy this song, and I did. Although it does become a little repetitive after a bit, the solo is also badass. This is the real ending of the album, at least for vinyl and I assume CD as well, but as I mentioned before, these last two songs here, Police Truck and The Planets on Fire, Burn in Hell featuring Sammy Hagar, are covers, so Police Truck has more of a punk feel, as I said. When I was listening to this, I was like, this is so weird. I did not expect this at all, but then I looked it up and I was like, oh, this is a Dead Kennedy song. That makes a lot more sense. I don't know the original song as much as a punk fan as I am. I don't know much about Dead Kennedys, so that's why I didn't realize it right away, but it was a fun kind of extra here. It wasn't really needed, but it was cool to have that here. And this final song featuring everybody's favorite, Sammy Hagar, was okay. I think that the kind of soloing on the guitars, kind of left and right randomly, really got me through the track because I'm not a big Sammy Hagar fan. I don't really think he's all that great. And I get why it's on the album. I think it's cool because that explains the whole 80s feel of it more, but 
it didn't really need to be here, although a lot of people will be like, this is amazing, oh my god, this is so good. And I understand it's a cover of one of his original songs from the 80s, so that makes sense. But overall, I think this album is really good. It kind of has this end-of-the-world, video game, futuristic kind of survival feel to it, and I think that really works. I think that The Sick, The Dying, and The Dead is a great album from Megadeth. I would love to listen to it again, although I will say it didn't stick with me as much as I would have liked, but that's totally okay, because there are 16 albums into their career. Of course, I'm going to go back and revisit the classic ones more than this, but I was not really mad at all. I liked all the songs here, at least the, the real songs on this album. There weren't really any that I could be like, that's a skip, that's a skip, although sometimes it did become a little bit repetitive, but I really recommend this album if you are a fan of Megadeth. I'm going to give The Sick, The Dying, and The Dead a 3.5 out of 5. It's a good one. It is a very good one, not one of my favorites of this year, and not something that I will care too much to go back and listen again. I might listen once or twice more this year, but nothing that I'm going to be listening to every single day or something like that. But if you've listened to this album, let me know what you think of it down below. I know I'll have a bunch of diehard Magda fans, so welcome to the channel. Let me know what you thought of this one, especially where does it compare to the other more recent ones, which I haven't checked out yet. Should I check them out? I probably will. And thank you all for watching. I will see you guys next time over and out.